Good evening and welcome to the June 6, 2022 regular meeting of Mayor and City Council. First item on our agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. If I can bring up Patrice Payne from our city staff to come lead us in the pledge, if everyone can please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Patrice. Next item on our agenda is reflection and um, in honor of our, our brothers and sisters who experienced unthinkable tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, um, I'd like to call for a moment of silence, please. Thank you all very much. Next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes. And tonight we have before us one set of minutes from the regular session on Monday, May 16. What is the pleasure of the council? Mr. Mayor, I move approval of the minutes from the regular session held May 16, 2022. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, that carries 3-0. Next on our agenda is presentations, and we have a few presentations tonight. The first um, is for our junior mayor, uh, but, and I'm going to call L'Oreal up in a minute, uh, but I just want to read a little background on what we're doing here. Um, this is a program that the city council and I are extremely proud of. I don't, I don't know, Patrice, I've I got to get the, the stats, like how long we've been doing junior mayor. It's got to be like 10 years at this point. You said what? 18? <coughs> wow. All right. 18 years. Um, it, so it came from a um, statewide essay contest that Maryland Municipal League runs each year. And the city of Gaithersburg decided to take it a step further. And instead of just like, uh, okay, you've written a great essay, we'll honor you for one day um, in Annapolis. Uh, we decided to take one fourth grader uh, from among all of the, the people who, who uh, submit essays and make them the junior mayor of the city of Gaithersburg. And they, they, they come with us to all of our city events for, the, for a full year. They ride on the trolley during the parade. They're, they have speaking roles at State of the City when we have State of the City and at the book festival and um, at other, other events, some occasionally in here, as you'll see tonight. Um, so what happens is local students submitted essays, uh, fourth graders, um, and we take, so um, we ask them to share what they think is unique about Gaithersburg and what slogan they might create for the city and how they would attract new residents and visitors. And, and our city staff and our educational enrichment committee reviewed more than 80 essays. Uh, they conduct, they chose finalists from those essays and, um, from those finalists, they they did, conducted interviews and picked our junior mayor. So it's with great pleasure that I'm about to introduce you to our 2022 junior mayor, L'Oreal Nix. L'Oreal is a student in Mrs. Ditto's fourth grade class at Summit Hall Elementary School and will be officially sworn in tonight, just in a minute. Um, and we're gonna hear her, uh, her essay as well, uh, which can be found on the city website. Um, and she, she, as I said, will have opportunity for the next year to, to join us at many of our events throughout the year. We were also, just as a side note, going to do an outgoing uh, recognition for our, our, our outgoing junior mayor, Abir Day, uh, but he could not make it this evening. So we're going to do that at, at the next possible opportunity. So for now, um, I'd like to invite L'Oreal to join me at the podium, and we'll swear her in. We'll hear her essay. So first, before we do the essay, we're going to do this swearing in. We have our junior mayor oath of office. So if you just look at me and raise your right hand and just repeat after me. I, L'Oreal Nix. I, L'Oreal Nix. Do promise. Do promise. To faithfully carry out. To faithfully carry out. The office of junior mayor. The office of junior mayor. 
of the greatest city in the world. Of the greatest city in the world. <laughs> Gaithersburg, Maryland. Gaithersburg, Maryland. And I will. And I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and embody. Preserve, protect, protect, protect and, embody. and embody. The six pillars. The six pillars of character counts. Of character counts. We're going to name those six pillars right now. Trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. Respect. Respect. Responsibility. Responsibility. Fairness. Fairness. Caring. Caring. And citizenship. And citizenship. I promise. I promise. To help educate. To help educate. Those in my community. To those in my community. About municipal government. About municipal government. Well done. And work alongside. And work alongside. Our elected officials. Our elected officials. Teachers. Teachers. My classmates. My classmates. In the community. In, my, in the community. To help make. To help make. Our city. Our city. A better place to live. A better place to live. Work, learn, yeah. and play. Work, learn, and play. Congratulations. So now I'm going to invite L'Oreal to read her essay, and then we'll bring her family up here to take a picture once, once she's done. So go right ahead. Respected Mayor, my name is L'Oreal Nixon, and I am a fourth grade student of Summit Hall Elementary School. I will be competing in this contest so I can become junior mayor. I would like to say that the soul of Gettysburg is to help the people in need if, they, if the people are low on in food. The community will have food distributions for those in need. They will give boxes that have vegetables, cereal, milk, and sometimes will also include books or gift cards. At the school, my, the crossing guard makes sure we get home to, to school and home from school safely. For example, when the crossing guard saved a kid from being hit by a car, that wasn't paying attention. Gaithersburg makes sure that kids have activities to do like going to summer camps and signing up to play sports and after school activities like Magnificent Mondays. Gaithersburg makes sure whenever you go, you are safe on the roads and have traffic lights, railroads, and speed limits. Gaithersburg makes, makes us safe during COVID-19 they made sure we wore our masks when we were able to return back to school. The city of Gaithersburg po policy made sure we police made sure we were safe to enter places like the parks, Gaithersburg pools, and recreation centers. In conclusion, I think that the soul of Gaithersburg is worth celebrating because it is a loving, helpful, and kind and the best place to be and live. If I am a junior mayor, I would love to help carry out some of the best duties to continue to make Gettysburg a safe and loving place. Awesome. While they're coming up, Madam Junior Mayor, I just want you to know that oath you took is longer than the one that we have to take. <laughs> so great job. <laughs> well done. Do you want to show the picture? Or are we hanging out back here? Perfect. Yeah, the lights are bright. All right. Thank, Thank you. So much. you. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. If we could only have that every meeting, we would just be so enriched. Um, thank you, L'Oreal. And congratulations to your family and to it, it, this is going to be a fun year. We look forward to having you with us all year long. Um, next, we have three proclamations, and because these are uh, new, 
new proclamations to be read at an actual meeting, um, a distinction that nobody in this room cares about except for me. Um, I, I'm going to read the background material, and I'm going to have each council member uh, read one of the proclamations. So the first one is Juneteenth, and Neil will be reading it. But So June 19th, 20, uh, 2022, best known as Juneteenth, uh, or Freedom Day, marks the 157th anniversary of the arrival of Union soldiers and General Gordon Granger in Galveston, Texas. On June 19, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Union soldiers enforced the President's order ending enslavement. About six months after Granger brought the message of emancipation to Texas, Congress ratified the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution, formally abolishing slavery. Since June 19, 1866, freed slaves have marked the day to celebrate their independence. Juneteenth is also known as Black Independence Day, Freedom Day, and Jubilee Day. The city of Gaithersburg celebrates Juneteenth slash Freedom Day as an official city holiday and further recognizes its importance with the proclamation urging all citizens to become more aware of the significance of this celebration in African American history and in the heritage of our nation and city. City programming in recognition of Juneteenth includes uh, most city offices will be closed on Monday, June 20th. Um, and the city of Gaithersburg will acknowledge Juneteenth during the Jubilation Day gospel concert on Saturday, June 11th, this Saturday, taking place from 3 to 7 p.m. at the City Hall Concert Pavilion. The Benjamin Gaither Center presents Celebrating Juneteenth, a TED Talk and discussion as its monthly social symposium lecture. It takes place on Friday, June 17 at 11 a.m. And the Gaithersburg Community Museum has a drop-in day activity planned on June 19th between 11.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Visitors will learn about the official Juneteenth flag and the significance of the color red in recognition of this day. And I'll ask Neil to read the proclamation. Thank you, Mayor. So this is a proclamation of the Mayor and City Council of Gaithersburg. Whereas June 19th, 2022, best known as Juneteenth or Freedom Day, marks the 157th anniversary of the arrival of Union General Gordon Granger to Galveston, Texas, where two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, African Americans learned of the end of enslavement. And whereas slavery in Maryland lasted more than 200 years, from its beginnings in 1642, when the first Africans were brought as slaves to St. Mary's City, and whereas on May 14, 2014, Maryland became the 43rd state to recognize Juneteenth as National Freedom Day, and whereas in Gaithersburg, we must collectively strive to close gaps of immeasurable distance between us and affirm the promise of the Declaration of Independence that all people have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and hold that the purpose of the American government must be to secure these rights for all. And as Americans, we must never forget or repeat the vivid and tragic examples of African-American history that expose the dehumanizing impact of racial, viol racial violence and that we must reject acts of violence and expand opportunities to understand and learn from our frank and complex conversations. Now, therefore, and this is the proclamation, I, Judd Ashman, by the power vested in me as mayor of Gaithersburg, respectfully unite with municipal leaders across the country in spirit and solidarity and do proclaim Sunday, June 19, 2022, as Juneteenth to acknowledge the historical significance of the day and recommit the city to working toward the dismantling of institutionalized racism. Proclaim this day, sixth day of June, 2022, and signed by Judd Ashman, Mayor of Gaithersburg. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> Appreciate that. And um, next, our next proclamation is for Caribbean American Heritage Month, and the city of Gaithersburg recognizes the history and achievements of Caribbean Americans throughout the month of June. Um, I'm just looking to see what's going to be repetitive here on the... <laughs> um, I'm just going to, because we don't have any particular events that are scheduled, um, I'm going to just talk, I'm just going to uh, mention that receiving this year's proclamation is Joan Beckford. You will see her um, in the slide that comes up. She's the owner of the Island Pride's Oasis Restaurant and Catering for over 20 years. Ms. Beckford has received many awards and certificates, including 
Caribbean American Heritage Spotlight Award from the Jamaican Nationals Association for recognition of her exemplary and dedicated service to local communities and an award from Walter Reed National Military Medical Center for dedicated assistance and support of Bethesda's Multicultural Committee's Caribbean American Heritage events. And I'll have Council Member Wu read the, the proclamation. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll note that Island Prides is a delicious restaurant here in Gaithersburg. Well, love food. Proclamation of the Mayor's City Council of Gaithersburg. Whereas Caribbean American Heritage Month is a month to celebrate and pay tribute to the contributions of Caribbean Americans to American history and culture by sharing their skills, knowledge, innovation, and initiative to enhance and advance many aspects of our society. And whereas Caribbean Americans have worked collectively to remove systemic racism and discrimination that pervaded our laws and our public consciousness for decades, we are honored to celebrate this National Caribbean American Heritage Month alongside Caribbean American barrier-breaking public servants, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona, and Domestic Policy Advisor Susan Rice, all of whom continue to be sources of pride and inspiration for Caribbean Americans across the country and many others. And. Whereas the largest number of Caribbean immigrants are found in Prince George's County, Maryland, in the amount of 22,965, Montgomery County, Maryland, in the amount of 16,797, and the District of Columbia in the amount of 8,415. And whereas Caribbean Americans have contributed greatly to the success of our nation in the areas of business, politics, education, medicine, cuisine, and the arts, we know we work best when we work together. Now, therefore, you, Judd Ashman, by the power vested in you as the mayor of, city, uh, mayor of Gaithersburg, to hereby proclaim June 22nd as Caribbean American Heritage Month in the city of Gaithersburg. Encourage all government officials, educators, businesses, and residents, the city to honor, recognize, and celebrate the contributions of Caribbean Americans. Proclaim this sixth day of June 2022, signed by Judd Ashman, mayor. Thank you very much. And our last proclamation for the evening is Pride Month, and Pride Month is celebrated annually in the United States during the month of June. The month of June has become a symbolic month around the world for LGBTQ plus people and allies to come together in various celebrations of acceptance and equality. The city will be celebrating Pride Month with a variety of programs, social media campaign, uh, a change in the uh, temporary change in the G logo. Uh, for the city of Gaithersburg on our social media accounts, uh, various activities and events, including a Golden Girls party on June 4th, which we, that's passed. I don't know why I'm announcing it now, but um, hopefully it was great. Um, story time at the Arts Barn, um, except when they don't, by Laura Gell uh, on June 10th from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Arts Barn. She's a terrific children's author. Um, Head Over Heels, the musical from the musical from June 10th through the 26th at the Arts Barn, songs by the Go-Go's, conceived an original book by Jeff Witte, adapted by James Magruder, based on the Aradia by Sir Philip Sidney in partnership with Damascus Theatre Company. Um, Equality Pride event on, on June 12th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Catlin's Mansion. Uh, Tasty Books, Peanut Goes for the Gold on June 25th, um, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. at KC Community Center. Sky Watching, Exploring Telescopes on June 25th from 7.30 to 10 p.m. at Observatory Park. Drag Queen Storytime Station on June 28th from 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. at the Gaithersburg Community Museum. Accepting the proclamation is Gaithersburg High School's Pride Alliance, this student-run organization provides LGBTQ plus students of Gaithersburg High School and their allies a safe space to be themselves and support each other. Members of the group recently created a poster campaign of famous LGBTQ plus pioneers for the school and are currently working on presenting a pride parade at Gaithersburg High School. The principal of Gaithersburg High School is Carrie Dimmick, and the sponsors for Pride Alliance are Colin Lewis and Evangeline Ferton. And I'm going to have Councilmember Spiegel read the proclamation. Thank you, Mayor. This is a proclamation of the Mayor and City Council of Gaithersburg. 
Whereas the month of June has become a symbolic month around the world for LGBTQ plus people and allies to come together in various celebrations of acceptance and equality, and whereas the long and ongoing struggle for transgender, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and other sexual minorities for basic civil and human rights continues to provide inspiration to all. And while society at large increasingly supports LGBTQ plus equality, it is essential to acknowledge that the need for education, awareness, and empowerment remains vital to end discrimination and prejudice. Now, therefore, Judd Ashman, by the power vested in him as mayor of Gaithersburg, does hereby proclaim June 2022 as Pride Month throughout the city of Gaithersburg, and it's proclaimed this sixth day of June 2022 and signed by Judd Ashman, mayor. Thank you all for helping read our proclamations tonight. Um, next item on our agenda is public comments. This is the time the mayor and council like to hear from anybody who'd like to speak on any topic that's not a public hearing topic, and that's easy because we have no public hearings tonight. We ask that you keep your comments no more than three minutes. If you have more than three minutes worth of material to deliver, uh, feel free to use your three minutes here and, and send us the rest via email. It'll be considered just the same. State your name and address or neighborhood if you prefer for the record. Do we have anybody who'd like to speak this evening? And I'm opening up our, our Zoom. I do see we have one hand. Yeah, please come on up. Come on up to the podium. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Mullins. I live in 935 Clopper. It's the Gateway Apartments. Um, and I'm also a commission. I'm on the Landlord uh, Tenant Affairs Commission as a tenant representative. Uh, so I wanted to follow up. I actually made some comments last meeting virtually. I wanted to follow up on those comments tonight. My first comment last time was regarding rent stabilization and how we need it urgently. So I'm here again, like the funny Bernie Sanders meme, uh, yet again <laughs> to tell you we need rent stabilization just as much. Uh, I can expand on that a little. I mean, just I, I know you all are already familiar, but there's no protection right now. There's no cap, okay, on rents. The only protection is if it's such an egregious rental increase that it's a constructive eviction. But I can tell you, you know, my day job is at the Montgomery County Renters Alliance. I'm not here on behalf of them this evening. But the calls I get, you know, pe people are, are trying to invoke that protection, but many are self-evicting before that happens. And that, you know, I know this because I get the call after. And they're looking for housing. And this is why it's so crucial right now to have rent stabilizations, because there isn't a lot of housing out there. Uh, and, and there is none if, if you consider, you know, not moving your child to a different school. I encourage you all to look up the school district for Thurgood Marshall Elementary, where our oldest goes, uh, and, and see where the rental units are, because it's a lot of half a million dollar houses around the school, but then there's a couple little pockets of rental housing. If we had to change complexes, uh, I mean, that would know, be changing schools. Okay. Um, and, you know, that's, but, but even so, uh, I don't agree with Mark Elrich on, on everything, but he's been very outspoken lately about how the numbers just don't add up. We're not gonna build our way out of this crisis. Um, there needs to be rent stabilization along with new units. And, and so I, I just, again, you know, I encourage you to, to not commenting on his, him as a candidate or anything, but he's just been, been really clear that we're not building it as fast as we're losing it. Um, but you know, I talk to a lot of people with, with low incomes you know, regularly, and it's just, the options are not out there. We need the, we need the city's help. Um, I, what I'll, I guess what I'll, what I'll leave, leave you all with is uh, just a couple comments on, well, I don't have time to go into the housing element. I'll save that for next time. Uh, yeah, I I I'll just leave it at that. Thank you for your time and, and consideration. Oh, here's, here's the last thing I'll say. If, if the only barrier is, is lack of like a proposal, I know a fellow commissioner you know, of mine, and I would be glad to volunteer any time to, to, to you know, brainstorm, write things up in the stabilization world. Tacoma Park has been a leader. We don't have to wait for the county. You know, we can show them uh, you know, what we can do, what's needed, when it's needed. Thank you again. Thank you. Do we have anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? 
Okay, not seeing anybody here in person. We're going to go to our Zoom audience and tech team. If you could bring up Richard Lindstrom, that would be great. Richard, uh, just unmute yourself, state your name and address or neighborhood, and go right ahead. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, my name is Richard Lindstrom. I've lived at 421 Gaither Street for 50 years as of July. In all that time, I can remember Gaither Street being repaved once. In the past year or two, I believe that every other street in East Deer Park has been resurfaced except Gaither. Uh, in her testimony, I think it was last month, my neighbor Tony Hudson, who walks uh, 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 this street, asked for it to be repaved to make her walking more easy. I just echo her request. Don't forget us. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate that. Um, we will follow up with staff and figure out where Gaither Street is on the uh, on our uh, street resurfacing schedule. Um, and I am not seeing any other anyone else who'd like to speak. So, so we will end public comments here. Um, David, if you want to, in if you want to follow up with us, send me a, send me an email, and we maybe we can have set up a meeting with staff to discuss the issue. That'd be great. Um, okay, so next item item on our agenda is from the mayor and city council, and we are starting tonight with Councilmember Harris. All right, thank you, Mayor. Been a busy few weeks since our last meeting, so I want to talk about some of the things that have been up uh, that we've been up to. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber of Commerce for their annual uh, wine and food tasting event. As always, one a great event, great chance to get together with members of the chamber and uh, have a chance for a tasty bite as well. Um, would like to congratulate the mayor and staff and all concerned about the Gaithersburg Book, Book Festival. Um, it was really a fabulous event. It was a little on the warm side, but uh, really a great day and we had a terrific turnout. And I love the new the location. I know it was done as a one time at Borer Park, but I would be inclined to encourage us to think about doing it uh, there on an ongoing basis. Um, I hope everyone had a good Memorial Day weekend and uh, enjoyed some family time as well as remembrances of those who gave everything they had for our country. Uh, I also want to congratulate all the families who had uh, graduates uh, this year. I know I've, I've uh, had a chance to speak with a number of friends and neighbors who have uh, had graduations is always a big deal and uh, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and uh, had a chance to meet with a couple of uh, organizations that have projects that they are proposing for the city for additional housing, which I know we need desperately, as well as a little bit of retail. Uh, and hopefully uh, those plans will progress in a manner that works well for everybody. Uh, and finally, there's a uh, next week, a meeting of the Transportation Planning Board to ratify, hopefully, the next 25-year plan for improving transportation in the region. Uh, as everyone probably knows, uh, we are in dire need of uh, reducing gridlock uh, and improving transit and other ways to get around. So uh, I will keep everyone posted, whether you like it or not, about what transpires at that next meeting. That's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. We'll go to Rob. Thanks, Mayor. I'm going to uh, ditto on a lot of stuff that Neil just said because I attended uh, many of those same things. Just a, a procedural question, I guess, for, for Dennis. Um, I, I know that with the Environmental Affairs Committee, we, we work with them to advance a lot of things for the council to consider. I don't know if the Landlord-Tenant Commission is similarly situated as a policy body or, or not, but I was just, I don't know if that's for a Dennis question or follow-up. Yeah, can I can follow up and look at their charge. Usually it's not, uh, we haven't focused on the policy issues with okay. them. It's really been on trying to help with the dispute resolution issues. Okay. I mean, not saying one way or the other on that, but we, we if we have these organizations set up within the city government to advise us on things, rather than a, a, you know just sitting one-on-one, -on -one, it might be worth having the discussion with the body itself, um, kind of like the way we use the EAC. Um, 
And just wanted to note that um, I had the, the honor of attending a um, a ceremony, I guess, a memorial in Rockville that was put on by the, the city of Gover city government Rockville and Bridget Newton um, to to um, I don't think commemorates the right word, but the vigil to, against gun violence. Yes, yeah. to to you know stand in solidarity with our, our our fellow citizens in Texas against gun violence and to speak out. Uh, in a much needed way uh, about the need for, for um, uh, reasonable gun control and, and, and stopping this epidemic. You know, I know that every time this happens, I, I mentioned, you know, I'm an Army guy. I, I train on the M16. Um, I know what, how lethal a weapon it is. Um, it's the same thing as an AR-15, um, just M16. You can put it on burst mode, uh, which you never do because you, you, you lose the ammo that way. You can't target it. So. AR-15 is exactly the same thing as an M16 for all intents and purposes. It's got a, a six football field uh, effective range. Um, it's not something that should be in the hands of, of civilians. So just want to say I appreciate uh, attending that meeting with you, uh, Judd and or Mr. Mayor, and, and for the city council in Rockville for putting it on. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. We'll go to Ryan. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, echo everything that's been said. I'll just mention a few other events that haven't yet been mentioned that some of us uh, attended uh, in the last couple of weeks since our last formal meeting. On uh, May 26th, the mayor and I joined uh, staff uh, and other community members, uh, including some members of our Old Town Advisory Committee, to cut the ribbon on uh, the new and improved uh, splash fountain uh, at the uh, Old Town Park Plaza. So I want to encourage everybody to take advantage of it as a great amenity. Uh, bring your kids uh, and, and kids you know in the, in the community to splash around in it during the hours when it's operating. And then, as I understand it, uh, with uh, new LED lights that have been installed, it will also, in the evenings when the water cuts off, uh, provide a nice uh, lighting amenity uh, for the Park Plaza um, and the center of Old Town. So we're glad to have that open and available for use. Um, and we'll probably see a few additional uh, amenities being added to the Park Plaza as well, more Adirondack chairs and things like that coming in the very near future. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, all right. Uh, and I'm, I'm getting a, uh, an indicator uh, from Tom Lonergan Seeger that we'll be uh, putting in uh, overhead lighting um, over the fountain as well, which will create a, a nice effect in the evenings as well as a place to gather. Um, I don't believe anyone has mentioned this yet, but I want to thank our three local Rotary Clubs for putting on another very successful Flags for Our Heroes event uh, over the course of Memorial Day weekend. Uh, a number of us were in attendance at the Saturday morning ceremony, sort of kicking off uh, the display of 750 American flags uh, on the lawn of Borer Park uh, to uh, acknowledge and remember uh, those uh, within our community or those who are connected to folks within our community. Um, who uh, made the ultimate sacrifice while they were uh, serving our country. Um, and it's always really just a beautiful event. And if you haven't had the chance to check it out, I encourage you next Memorial Day weekend to go to Borer Park. You don't have to go during the official Saturday morning ceremony. You can just sort of wander through the flags or take photos of the flags uh, anytime during Memorial Day weekend through, uh, I guess, through Monday night or, or Tuesday morning. And thanks to uh, the three local Rotary Clubs who always make that happen and make it a successful event. Uh, we hosted our own City Memorial Day ceremony on May 30th in Chrisman Park, uh, and it was a, a beautiful commemoration as always. Uh, we had an outstanding uh, guest keynote speaker um, and um, a great crowd, and uh, that was a, a beautiful commemoration as well. So thanks to everybody who was involved, um, all of the... Uh, support organizations and nonprofit groups that provide wreaths uh, and other materials and service during that ceremony, uh, all the staff and volunteers, and uh, all the Gold Star families, of course. Um, on June 2nd, uh, we had the annual uh, Coaches Appreciation Picnic to thank all of the volunteer coaches who make our uh, Gaithersburg Recreation and Sports Programs such a big success every year. Unfortunately, we had that big storm, and so it had to be moved from the water park indoors to the activity center. But I was able to show up um, and just thank all of those coaches in person on behalf of the mayor and council. We really do appreciate the hundreds of hours that they put in to volunteer every year to mentor these kids and sort of uh, lead by example uh, for so many youth in our community. 
Um, and on uh, June 3rd, uh, the mayor and I joined uh, other uh, state and local officials and members of the community and the Ger Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber of Commerce to cut the ribbon on a uh, new dining establishment in the city, Corner Pizza and Subs. Uh, and we got to taste a little bit of the wares. It was, it was excellent. Uh, and it is located in the shopping center right near uh, Brewster's Ice Cream. Um, so you may want to go check that out. And then finally tonight, in follow-up to Councilmember Wu's comments uh, about gun violence, I just wanted to share a few of my own thoughts about the recent mass shootings um, in Buffalo and Tulsa and so many other places that have suffered the horrors uh, of those mass shootings, but especially, especially Uvalde. And uh, we all have a lot of complicated thoughts and feelings about this issue. And I mean, to me, it's frankly maddening to know that our children, my own elementary school age children, have had to run active shooter drills uh, at their school for years now. Here at City Hall, we've had to take active shooter response training in this very room. Um, the mayor and I are both wearing uh, orange, which is the designated color for gun safety advocacy. And um, I know I have a lot more to say than what I'm gonna say tonight, but I just wanna say a few things. Lately, I'm feeling the strong need to say that it is not enough to teach about and learn from our history or to acknowledge it with proclamations or to grieve collectively and honor victims, even though those are all things we should do. And it's not even enough to embrace all parts of our community with love even though that is absolutely what we must do. Instead, we have to take action. We have to do something. We have to recommit ourselves to productive purposes that actually effect change by rooting out not only the symptoms, but also the causes of these terrible, terrible tragedies and injustices. And really, in a way, the same is true for Juneteenth and for Pride Month and for any other causes that are important not just to our past, but to our present and our future when it comes to justice and equality and safety for our community. But it is hard, it can be hard, to figure out exactly what actions to take, what things to be doing. And I've seen a lot of my friends and colleagues on social media lately saying, okay, but what exactly should I be doing to help? And that's especially true when you live in a state that already has some of the strongest gun regulations and you have congressional representatives here who already strongly support federal legislation. So in the coming weeks and months, I'm gonna be thinking a lot about what practical, concrete steps we can actually be taking as a community, as a city, as a state, to reduce the risk of mass shootings and gun violence beyond the actions we've already taken so far. And I hope everyone will join me in that effort. I know my council colleagues and the mayor will. And I welcome ideas and suggestions from everybody because, as I told you earlier, I'm feeling that speeches and proclamations and even the existing laws on the books are just not enough. So I wanted to share those thoughts tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. <clears throat> um, I will associate myself with every single remark that's, that's um, been given here. Um, and you guys mentioned so many different events that I was at, it saves me from having to bring them up. Uh, I will not repeat them. I will, I will note that um, tomorrow night, uh, 7 p.m. at Kelly Park, I will be throwing out the first pitch for the, the Gaithersburg Giants uh, season. They're part of the Cal Ripken League. It's sort of college baseball players um, it, playing here for us. And, and so if you want to see me. Overhand. Yeah, I'm going to be pitching overhand just so you guys know. It's not going to be an underhand oh. thing. But I will probably embarrass myself, so you want to see that, then come out and see it. I'll be there. Don't try the curveball. I don't think you've got it in you anymore. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, it's possible. Uh, uh, next week, we will not have a work session uh, on June 13th because uh, most, if not all of us, will be at the Maryland Municipal League Convention uh, in Ocean City. The next meeting we will have, uh, we'll, which will also be hybrid in person, and, or if you want to participate via Zoom, will be on Tuesday, June 21st. As noted before, we will uh, Monday is a day off because of Juneteenth, so we will have that meeting on Tuesday, June 21st. And um, I will turn it over to from the city manager. I only had one item, Mayor. I wanted to thank all the staff who work the events that we've had um, sent them. The book festival, which is one of our signature events, really involves all the staff members 
here at the city. So they take their time um, to do that on a Saturday, but also all the prep work that takes in. And then this year on Memorial Day, we actually had the event on Memorial Day. So I wanted to thank the staff who took their day off to come and help uh, work that event. So that's it. Excellent. I'm glad you did. And by the way, um, staff has come up with the estimate for attendance at the book festival. They're estimating 18,500, which is a which is a great number. It's not our record, but it's a great number. But I I will acknowledge that um, there is some art to that um, estimate because it's it's not a ticketed event. People can come from anywhere, and it's very hard to figure out how many people came. They did their best, and I'm I'm happy with 18,500. Next, we have our economic development update, and we have Tom Lonergan Seeger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, everybody. Just a couple of items tonight. Wanted to mention that the city of Gaithersburg's unemployment rate in April, the most recent month for which the state's Department of Labor has data, was 3.3%, down from 4.1% a month earlier, and far below the 6.6% unemployment rate we registered one year ago this month. Uh, that's still below the statewide average of 3.5%, slightly more than the countywide average of 3%, but overall we have been trending in the right direction. Uh, secondly and finally, I did want to highlight um, two new businesses that were not mentioned tonight, but they are getting some well-deserved attention of late. Did anybody make it to Lapu Lapu over the weekend to try their breakfast? No? You have another shot at it tomorrow morning at 216 Market Street West in the Kentlands next to Vasili's. Uh, by all accounts, it did go so well that they I heard they'd run out of food. They ran out of sandwiches for sure. They did. Wow. But they're doing it again tomorrow morning, part two, tomorrow, Tuesday, from 7 to 3 p.m. So if you can, come out and enjoy the breakfast sandwiches and uh, welcome Chef Javier to the neighborhood. And today, I did have the opportunity to drop by yet another new and independently owned business that also opened in the Cantlands community, Bonjuju, located at 212 uh, Main Street. Um, However, as I happened to stop by during school hours, I wasn't able to meet the proprietors, uh, the proprietor, uh, Juliana, for as you may have heard, she's only 17 years old and attends as a junior at Northwest High School and school was still in session. But I did get a chance to meet and speak at length with the parents of Juliana, uh, very proud parents, I should say, who, while clearly supporting their daughter's dreams, were sure to highlight the many ways around the store that Juliana herself brought the vision to life everything from uh, negotiating with the clothing vendors uh, and accessory vendors who supply the boutique uh, right down to the store's layout and the paint colors. Uh, her dad did tell me that the community response and support for the business has been overwhelming, which opened just two weeks ago and it's been amazing. I uh, just wanted to wish both of these businesses great success and thank them for their investment and confidence in us. That's all I got. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. We love news of new businesses opening in the city of Gaithersburg. There's no doubt about that. We're going to move on to ordinances, resolutions, and regulations, and we're going to start here with our nonprofit, our resolution uh, authorizing the city manager to extend contract with three nonprofit agencies uh, for our community services grants. And in instead of, so Brooke, I want to bring you up to the podium, and Mary, um, I don't know... Is it, are you prepared to do this? Because yeah, you're just, filling in for Dave and you're... I'm filling in for everybody. You're filling in for everybody. Okay. <laughs> yes. Just just tilt that microphone towards you. Perfect. Am I too short for this? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, good evening, Mayor, City Council, and staff. I am Brooke Whitson, a member of your Community Advisory Committee. As you know, your Community Services staff and the chairman of our committee have become unavailable tonight due to unexpected medical issues for all of them. So I am here as your pitch hitter with a resolution authorizing the city manager to extend a contract with three nonprofit agencies for the city of Gaithersburg city, excuse me, excuse me, community service grants. So the amount is $1,040,201. That's what was approved in the city's operating budget for fiscal year 2023 uh, to provide funding for s social service needs through grants to nonprofit agencies in the priority areas of seniors and disabled services, health and mental health, housing, financial empowerment, vocational services, food and nutrition, and youth mental health and education support. So contracts for the community service grants are awarded with one year with the option of a one year extension, and those for the school-based nonprofit grants are awarded for one year. 
So our committee, the Community Advisory and the Educational Enrichment Committee at your request, we reviewed and evaluated the grant submissions and provided recommendations to the city manager, mayor, and city council as part of the fiscal year 2023 operating budget. And we recommended the following funding allocations, which are at a threshold that require a resolution by mayor and city council of Gaithersburg. So for the housing preservation, the amount is $207,375 to the Housing Initiative Partnership. For vocational coaching, the amount of $153,318 to Interfaith Works. And for mental health assistance for youth, the amount is $115,481 to Family Services Incorporated. Our community service staff believes it is in the best interest of the city to execute these contracts with these organizations to support the collaborative programs and services I mentioned before um, in accordance with our committee's recommendations effective July 1st, 2022. More information about these grants for fiscal year 2023 to those nonprofit organizations can be found under the community services on the city's website. And now this resolution is before you for a vote. Um, I could be here to answer your questions, but I know our staff is also standing by to answer them for you. Thank you, Brooke. Thank well you. done. Can I just say, uh, Brooke Whitson is a volunteer on our committee who hasn't <laughs> been put in this position before and just did a masterful job of of leading us through this item. So good good on you. That's that's very kind, but it was your staff. They held my hand the entire <laughs> way. <laughs> Thank um, you. So um, as Brooke mentioned, this is money that's been budgeted. It just has not been allocated to any specific uh, vendors, what is the pleasure of the council? I'd just like to make a quick comment, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thanks very much both to the Community Advisory Committee and the Educational Enrichment Committee. I used to be on the Educational Enrichment Committee back when it was just called the Education Committee. Um, it wasn't and I, that enriching. It wasn't that enriching, I guess, back then until I left. Um, but uh, I, I've seen firsthand the work that's involved from the volunteers on these committees uh, and the staff who support them in reviewing all these grants and going through all this and making difficult decisions to make recommendations with limited funding. And I know we as a mayor and council have done what we can to try to increase the pot a little bit every year as we can um, because these services are so important. But I just want to take a second to publicly thank the committees for their work. I also uh, would be remiss if I did not mention that the significant funding of youth mental health services uh, certainly critical in relation to the comments I made a moment ago. Excellent points. Do you want to move the resolution? I do. I move the resolution. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Okay, that carries 3-0. Thank you very much. Um, next, let me just get to my... Sandra Gross, come on up to the podium. We're going to talk about the Casey Community Center pedestrian bridge replacement. Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. The resolution before you is to authorize the City Manager to enter into a contract for construction services for the Casey Community Center pedestrian bridge replacement. A little background, in 2020, the City closed the Casey Community Center pedestrian bridge to public access after a routine bridge inspection identified structural deterioration and that posed a safety hazard. The city retained Alpha Corporation in 2021 to perform an engineering evaluation and to prepare design documents for a complete demolition and replacement of the bridge. The design was completed in early 2022 and on March 4th, 2022 was advertised as RFP 2022-025 for the bridge replacement. The scope of the project includes the removal and disposal of the existing foundation and bridge structure, the construction of a new bridge foundation, the design, fabrication, transportation, and installation of a pre-engineered galvanized steel twin girder pedestrian bridge with a galvanized deck. The proposals were opened, were received and opened on March 30th. Four contractors submitted proposals, um, and the review of the proposals is included in the award recommendation, which can be found in the uh, packet page on page 33. We had a three-person selection committee consisting of city staff who discussed agree and agreed that only two of the four contractors met the minimum requirements stated in the RFP for firm qualifications and work experience. Both provided excellent an excellent level of experience, qualification, qualifications, and references, so they were asked to negotiate and submit a best and final offer. 
only Brawner builders responded to the best and final offer. The committee selection committee recommends the award of the contract to the most qualified, responsive, and responsible contractor meet, meeting our requirements. Brawner Builders, Inc. in the amount of $246,725. excuse me, $246,725. The funding is available in the Capital Improvement Program budget for fiscal year 2022 in the amount of $115,000 with the remainder of the construction contract $131,725,000 being funded by the CIP contingency line item. We feel this high cost is due to multiple factors, uh, including the rapidly increasing price of steel and other construction materials, the relatively small size and area of this bridge product project, and the lack of qualified local con contractors willing to perform this type of work. The construction duration should be approximately six months, which includes 14 weeks for fabrication and delivery of the bridge. I'd be happy to answer any questions or listen to any comments you might have. Thank you very much. Questions, comments? Not someone want to move the resolution. Rob, go ahead. The, um, is there a comparative price analysis? I see the scoring. A comparative score, price? Yeah, so the pricing submitted by the other the price the pricing ranged from one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. This is not the highest. Okay. The two lowest bids were the one the contractors that were not recommended due to their qualifications. Okay. Yeah, that, I like the the sheet that you have in here. Actually, it provides more information about the rationale for award. But that, I I kind of would like to see the in the future okay. uh, the comparative pricing. We we're hoping to be able, you know, with an RFP, to be able to negotiate, uh, you know, more, but with only okay. one that responded. So move the resolution. Okay. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Carries 3 0. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We look forward to getting the bridge back up and being able to use it again. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Patrick Fitzgerald. Please join us. So this, we're going to be talking about uh, professional services for the stormwater program fee reassessment. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. The resolution before you tonight is to authorize the City Manager to amend the contract for professional services for the stormwater program fee reassessment. Pursuant to resolution R7721, the City authorized expenditures in the, in the total amount not to exceed $96,906 for the stormwater program fee reassessment. The contractor, Wood Environment and Infrastructure Solutions, Inc., has reassessed the city's stormwater program fee by analyzing its cost components and investigating cost implications for various options to take over structural maintenance of stormwater facilities under common ownership community ownership. The contractor also assisted staff in presenting these findings in the mayor, to the mayor and city council during two prior work sessions. The contractor has issued a proposal to provide additional services to support staff in updating the existing stormwater fee manual into a stormwater program manual, as well as additional coordination and manual drafts, at a total additional cost of $11,490. The primary need for the manual update will be to guide eligible common ownership communities on how they can have certain stormwater maintenance responsibilities transferred to the city. The manual will also be updated and expanded upon to cover other aspects of the stormwater program. Are there any questions? Questions, comments? <coughs> Not someone want to move the resolution. Yeah, so. given the scope of work, it seems like a reasonable amount of money. So I'd like to move the resolution if Ryan doesn't mind. Go ahead. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Carries 3 0. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, next, we're, we're going to talk about some elections, ordinance, updates, amendments, um, and joining us virtually is our city attorney, Lynn Board, uh, to lead us through this. Tech team, if you can bring up Lynn, that would be great. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, terrific. Um, we have before us tonight introduction of a ordinance that amends the city's Chapter 6C, which is our election code. Uh, there are several different changes to different ordinance provisions. 
that these changes came about as a result of the Board of Supervisors of Elections debrief of the 2021 election and the joint public work session that was held between the Mayor and Council and the BOSC. So there are four different changes that are proposed. The first is in the definition section to um, section 6C-1. We've added a definition of absentee voting so that absentee voting includes uh, voting by mail. So vote mail-in voting and also mail-in ballots. Um, the reason for this is, you know, obviously as the mayor and council are aware, we have changed our voting practices to allow pretty robust mail-in balloting. Um, state law does require that all municipalities offer absentee ballots and absentee voting. Uh, so we are changing our definition to be inclusive of both of those uh, both of those methods under our definition of absentee voting. Uh, the second changes are to section 6C5 and 7. Uh, these are campaign finance provisions of the city code. And the, the change is the same for both of these. It really just changes the date for the um, submission of annual campaign finance reports uh, so that they're no longer due on December 31st, which has created some issues in the past. Uh, so now the annual campaign finance reports for both candidates and political committees will be due on the second Monday after January 31st of each year. Um, the last change to the code uh, deals with when absentee ballots or mail-in ballots are available for distribution. Um, previously, the ordinance required that those be available 60 days prior to the election. During the joint public hearing, there was uh, both some comments from the mayor and council as well as the public that they thought that that was too early for absentee ballots or uh, mail-in ballots to be sent out because at that point, uh, the city's voter guide had not, you know, would not have been released. Um, not much opportunity for forums or debates prior to that date. So the Board of Supervisors of Elections recommended kind of a little bit of a hybrid approach so that applications for ballots would be available 60 days prior to the election, but then the actual ballots would not be mailed out until 30 days prior to the election. Uh, this change will also help the election staff and kind of even out its, its workload and, and workflow and make sure that we get ballots out on a timely basis. Uh, the Board of Supervisors of Elections did review all of these changes and are recommending them to the Mayor and Council. Should the mayor and council wish to introduce them this evening, we are requesting that you schedule a public hearing for July 5th of 2022. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, as Lynn described, this is an introduction. So if we you choose to introduce, we'll go to public hearing. Do we have any questions or comments? If not, would someone like to move to introduce? Move to introduce. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Right. Any opposed? Say nay. Carries 3-0. Thank you, Lynn. That was pretty easy. You're welcome. All right. Um, so next on our agenda is from the city attorney, and I heard from Lynn earlier. She doesn't have anything. Is there anything from any other staff this evening? Not seeing any. Um, okay. Well, then I will um, remind everyone that we do not have a work session coming up next week as we normally would. The next regular next meeting of the mayor and council is on the 21st if i'm going back to that announcement tuesday june 21st uh 2022 um 7 30 p.m and until then let's do great things gaithersburg we are adjourned <laughs>